Here we're going to outline a nice strategy for making infinitely many formulas for pi involving the inverse tangent of rational numbers. And so we'll start by proving something a little bit more general, and that is if we've got uh, positive real numbers a, b, and c that satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the arctan of a over b plus c plus the arctan of b over a plus c is equal to pi over 4. And the way that we'll prove this result is to take a right triangle with side length a, b, and hypotenuse c and work off of this. So the first thing that we're going to do is put this triangle inside of a circle of radius c. So let's get that circle on the board. Okay, so there we've got our circle on the board where this vertex right here, which is the vertex with sides of length b and c intersecting, is the center of our circle. Now what I'm going to do is name some of these angles. So the angle opposite, opposite the side of length A we'll call alpha. And then the angle opposite side length B we'll say that that has angle measure beta. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is extend this segment which contains the side with length uh, B you know, in both directions. So actually, I'm just going to extend it into a diameter of this circle. Okay, so there we've extended that into a diameter of this circle. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vertex up here, which is opposite the angle with measure alpha, and I'm going to make a line segment from this vertex to the intersection of that diameter that we created with the circle. Okay, so let's see, that's going to go something like this. And now we'll observe that this arc that I'm highlighting in magenta is subtended by this angle from the center of measurement alpha and this angle from the other side of the circle as well. But we know if we've got an angle here of alpha giving us this arc, and then an angle over here at the other side of the circle giving us the same arc, we know that the measurement of this angle is alpha over 2. That's a standard fact from geometry. Okay, so next up what I'll do is look at this red triangle. So here I've got this red triangle here with... Let's see, one side length is A, so I'll put an A in there in red, and then another side length here is B plus C. It's B from the original triangle, and then it's C from this extra radius of our circle. And remember that our circle had radius C, because also our original hypotenuse was a radius of our circle. And then we've got this hypotenuse right here, which I guess we could find a formula for because we've got a right triangle, but we don't actually need that for our purposes. So now what I'd like to observe is that the tangent of alpha over two can be calculated and the tangent will be A over B plus C. But that of course tells us that alpha over two is equal to the arctan of A over B plus C. Okay, good. Now let's observe that we've got the arctan of A over B plus C in this formula right here. So we're kind of halfway through the path of creating this formula. Okay, so now let's get rid of this picture and then see how we can get something involving this inverse tangent of B over A plus C. And now next up, we're going to take our original triangle, which I have flipped here. So this is just a flip of our original triangle. And well, let's get some of our measurements there again. So here we've got an alpha here and we've got a beta here for the measurements of those angles opposite side with length a and side with length B. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to create a circle with radius C that has a center at this vertex right here. So that's the vertex where we have the intersection of the side with length A and the side with length C. So let's get that circle on the board. Okay, so there's our circle on the board and now we're about to make pretty much the same argument that we did before. So let's take this side with length A and we'll extend it into a diameter of our circle. 
We know this is going to be a diameter of our circle because it necessarily goes through the center given the fact that we built this circle that it would, so that it would have a center at this vertex. Okay, so next up we're, what we're going to do is create a new line segment which comes from this point down here, this kind of bottom point of intersection of our diameter and our circle, and then this vertex of our triangle right here. Okay, so let's see, it'll go like this. Okay, so that's pretty straight. Now I'm gonna make a similar argument involving an arc that I did before. So in this case, it's gonna be this arc up here in question. Now on the one hand, we have an angle with measurement beta at the center of our circle that's subtending that arc. And on the other hand, we've got an angle over here at the edge of the circle making the same arc. But we know, again, from that kind of standard fact in geometry that those angles are related by the one attached to the edge of the circle has half the measurement. So we've got that this is beta over two. Okay, so now I'd like to take a look at this triangle that I'll highlight in red. Okay, so let's see, it's got that, that side, and then here is our hypotenuse. And notice that this side over here has length A plus C. Again, because we're in a radius C circle and then we've got this kind of original side length. And then here we've got that this is, well, it's gonna be still length B. But now let's observe, we can make a tangent of beta over two argument similar to how we made a tangent of alpha over two argument. So we have the tangent of beta over two is gonna be equal to, well, it's gonna be B over A plus C. So there we've got that B over A plus C. But of course that tells us that beta over two is equal to this inverse tangent of B over A plus C. And in fact, essentially we're done at this point. And we can see that because if we take this sum over here, and maybe I'll do the final calculation in this little box. So let's notice that we've got this arctan of A over B plus C plus this inverse tangent of B over A plus C is gonna be equal to alpha over two plus beta over two by our geometric argument that we just finished making. But that's, of course, going to be equal to one-half alpha plus beta. But now look at this over here. Alpha plus beta must be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. That's because alpha plus beta plus this right angle right here must be 180 degrees or pi radians because we're inside of a triangle. So that means we've got this is equal to one-half times pi over two. In other words, this is pi over four. But that's exactly where we wanted to end up with this. Okay, so we've got this theorem proved. Now what I'd like to do is look at an application of this theorem to build infinitely many formulas for pi involving the inverse tangent of rational numbers. Thanks for sticking around this long in the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing, it really helps out. Okay, so now what we're going to do is use this theorem to make an infinite family of formulas involving pi and the inverse tangent of rational numbers. So right away, we're going to use the fact that all primitive Pythagorean triples are of the form m squared minus n squared, 2mn and m squared plus n squared, where the GCD of m and n is 1. So this is a standard result. In fact, I think I've got an old video on the channel where we derive this. But perhaps it's time to update that video. Okay, so anyway, let's observe that this immediately tells us that the arctan of, let's see, well, let's have this a plus b over c, so that's going to be m squared minus n squared over m squared plus 2mn plus n squared plus the inverse tangent of, let's look at this b over a plus c, so that's going to be 2mn over, now adding those two together will give us 2m squared equals pi over Four. But now let's observe that that immediately simplifies 
And we can see that because this numerator factors as m minus n times m plus n. And then this denominator right here factors as m plus n squared. So let's see, after some simplification, we'll have that this is the arctan of m minus n over m plus n, and then plus the inverse tangent of, well, notice the twos and then some m's will cancel here. That'll leave us with n over m equals pi over four. So we've got something like that. So just to give something super concrete, let's observe that the primitive Pythagorean triple three, four, five, which let's observe is associated with m equals two and n equals one, gives rise to this formula. So we'll have the arctan of one third plus the arctan of one half equals pi over four. So I think that's already kind of a famous formula on its own. Next up, let's observe that the Pythagorean triple five, 12, 13 will, after some simplification, be associated with this formula, the inverse tangent of one fifth plus the inverse tangent of two thirds equals pi over four. And then maybe one more for good measure, the primitive Pythagorean triple eight, 15, 17, will give rise to this formula right here, which is the inverse tangent of a quarter plus the arctan of three fifths equals pi over four. So of course here we're at some small, if you will, Pythagorean triples. You can use this formula to get really large Pythagorean triples, which will give rise to seemingly more impressive looking formulas involving the inverse tangent of rational numbers and the number pi. And that's a good place to stop.